Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I've put together a list of things you'll need when you're going to buy a gecko. A leopard gecko to be specific. I did this video a while ago but it really needed updating. I'll leave some helpful links to other videos in the description down below and whilst you're there check out my links for Facebook, Instagram, Patreon and you now. And also use the hashtag Leopard Gecko Talk Setup on Instagram to show off your Leopard Gecko enclosures and I may repost a few. But first let's start off with the enclosure itself. A two foot long tank should be sufficient for a single Leopard Gecko. Tanks can be wooden vivariums or glass terrariums, even sometimes aquariums. However, I do find for the best results with taming, it helps to approach your gecko side on rather than above. I feel like they freak out a little bit more when you have an aquarium and you reach in. However, just make sure they have lots of floor space. Though tanks that are too big, especially for babies, can cause stress and they can fail to find adequate food and water and heat. Vivarium and terrarium prices really vary, though I find generally the 23 inch wooden vivariums I use tend to range at about 30 to 50 pounds. Next up, heating. Now leopard geckos need to be kept at around 30 to 32 degrees Celsius, so you want a decent heat source. At the moment, the most reliable things I use are heat mats. I always use 6 by 11 inch 7 watt Haberstadt heat mats. You'll find these at around 13 pounds. Of course, you can use ceramic heaters and deep heat projectors, but at the moment, most people find a heat mat covering a third to a half of the tank floor works best. You'll also need a thermostat as this controls the temperature. Now, these can be expensive. However, the mat stats that I use by Haberstadt are only around 23, 25 pounds. So they're actually quite good. Then you'll need a thermometer to read the temperature and I just use a generic thermometer that I got off of eBay. Just make sure it has a probe so you can put it straight on the heat mat. And this only cost me about two to three pounds. Now for lighting. If the room your gecko is being kept in is so dark they can't distinguish day from night, then you can use an LED. However, personally, I wouldn't recommend using any LEDs or night lights during the night as the geckos need a period of darkness. You can also use a low percentage UVB. I use one that's about 2 to 3%. It's a mini UVB kit by Arcadia and it's about 24 to 25 pounds and the tube light has to be replaced once a year. Keep in mind if you do use UVB, you don't want to be supplementing your gecko with synthetic D3. This moves me on to supplements, an incredibly important part of keeping any reptile that nobody should skip over. So if you use UVB, you don't want to supply synthetic D3. What I use is Arcadia Earth Pro A, and this is a natural, non-toxic supplement, and I would highly recommend it. And I also use Earth Pro Calcium and Magnesium alongside it by putting it in a little milk lid in their tank. If, however, you don't provide UVB, then you must supplement your gecko with a multivitamin that contains D3. Calcium with D3 alone is not sufficient since there's a long list of other vitamins and minerals that your gecko desperately needs. In the past, I've used pure calcium alongside Nutribol. I highly recommend watching the supplementing and feeding video that I did as this explains the whole supplementing situation in more detail. I'll link it in a card here and also in the description down below. And finally, you'll need to get your gecko some substrate and cage decorations. Now, substrate is highly debated on in the leopard gecko community. I always used EcoEarth for literally over a decade and now my natural tanks contain Earth Mix Arid. There's quite a price difference between the two, but Earth Mix Arid is probably much safer if ingested, though I would like to point out I have never had a single problem in over a decade with using EcoEarth. Other substrates include paper towel, lino, slate and reptile carpet. Every substrate has its pros and cons, so check out my guide to leopard gecko substrates and hopefully that should help you choose what's best for your gecko. Ones to completely avoid include gravel, calcium sand, wood chips or bark, and cat litter. As for decorations, two to three hides are recommended. These prices vary completely depending on 
what brand you use and what style you want. Just make sure the hide over the heat mat doesn't have a bottom and that the hides are nice and dark so the geckos feel comfortable and safe. You'll also need a water bowl and if you like a food bowl. You can also add in artificial plants if you so wish. Some of the natural tanks now have succulents in but I, I can't keep them alive. I'm just, I'm just awful. Anyway, I hope you have taken some notes and got some ideas and you're a bit more prepared for when you go shopping for your reptile. Make sure everything is set up and working well in advance of buying your gecko. And as I said at the start, if you'd like to show off your leopard gecko setups, make sure your profile is public, tag me in the picture or use the hashtag leopard gecko talk setup and I shall have a look and potentially share a few. So if you haven't already, please subscribe. Thank you very much for watching guys and goodbye.